Okay, now let's move on to troubleshooting. Start out talking a little bit more about the stamp steel. We get a lot of calls where people call up and say, you know, that thing has really got a hard pedal. I man, that thing is hard. A lot of the trucks that require or use the stamp steel originally came out with, again, the Vallejo style. But since these two clutches are interchangeable, a lot of them got changed out. What you really want to watch out for is if it's got a cable linkage. If it's got a cable linkage, you might want to think about going back with the Vallejo if you do experience a hard pedal, because that's one of the things that causes it. The next thing on the stamp steel you need to watch out for, even though it's clearly marked, is it's very easy to put this adapter ring in upside down. Now, it's even marked in the casting, it says flywheel side. So you want to make sure you put that down flywheel side because as soon as you bolt that up, it's upside down, it's going to crack the adapter ring. That's what causes that, gentlemen. It's not that uh, it had a bad ring, it's because it was put in upside down. So beware and be sure you mark flywheel side. Now, a lot of these are used, the stamp steel are used with hydraulic linkage. Now, talking again about flywheels, the flywheels for the stamp steel covers are very thin. And with a hydraulic linkage on that application, you don't have any adjustment as far as where the fork rides. So when you turn the flywheel, you're not going to have any free pedal because the fork is going to be right on the bearing. So it's recommended that when you go back and you're doing one of those clutches, buy a new flywheel and save yourself a lot of headache. Now, we talked before about the blocks. They're going, like, eh, this old wooden block, whatever. These blocks will tell you a lot about the clutch when you're first installing it. The block should very easily just come back, fall out, when you have your half inch, eight inch. If the blocks don't come out and you've got to pry them out, stop. Don't go any farther. You've got a flywheel issue. And generally what will happen is on the 14 inch, we were talking about the 2.937, they didn't machine it right and the lip is too tall. Now also, on the 15 and a half inchers, Again, we were talking about this lip here gets too tall. It actually, the cover will seat on the flywheel ring and not on the flywheel surface. Another thing we'll do this too is you take it to a lot of these machine shops and they've got a worn stone. Those stones wear to the edge. So instead of them getting a good clean cut, straight cut like a 90 degree all the way up to here, it'll have a roll in it. When that happens, that cover sitting on top of that roll is not seating on the flywheel. Now, another thing about the blocks. Watch the position of the bearing when you first install the clutch. We are talking about the half to 9 sixteenths, 8 dimension. If that bearing has got over 9 sixteenths, maybe even 3 quarters of 5 eighths, you got something going wrong there. Chances are it's very easy to do. You've got a disc in backwards or you're hitting the flywheel mounting ports. So be sure and check that. Now, one thing about it, I know everybody wants to make these things go in easy because it's not an easy job. A lot of you guys will put a lot of NICs and a lot of grease right in here on the initial installation. Highly advise against that because what happens is with that new hub in there, you've maybe got three, four thousandths clearance. That grease or anti-seize will actually form a vacuum and you will not let that disc float and your clutch won't release. So on the initial installation, leave off the anti-seize and leave off the grease, please. All right, let's talk a little bit about rattles. Everybody loves rattles. Can't figure the darn things out. I'm trying to be funny about that. What happens is on a fork is Everybody usually looks at a fork on the tips, right in this area. That's where it makes contact with the bearing pad. Well, another area you really need to watch out for on a fork is right here on the inside. Because what happens is, when you put a new clutch in, the bearing is packed full of grease. So it has a lot of resistance. So as that clutch turns, 
bearing wants to turn right along with the clutch. When you got a worn fork, what happens is it's rattling on the inside. Now, an easy way of diagnosing that, you push on the clutch pedal or start to push it down, and your rattle goes away, that's usually a pretty good sign the fork is worn. Now, let's take it one step farther. If you got a worn fork, that can also cause, as far as when the tips are worn, that's going to cause some time for the bushing to come out of your bearing here. But something else that will cause bushing wear is going to be on the second generation sleeve is there's no way for the grease. Normally when you used to grease the old style bearings, you grease the bearing until the grease would squirt out right here. And what that would happen was it would get all over the input shaft here, and that's what kept your bushings lubricated as it worked back and forth. With a second generation sleeve, the hole is bigger on the bottom. Where do you think all the grease goes? The grease doesn't come out the front, it comes out down here, and it slings all over the inside of the bell housing. So what's happening here, the bushings themselves have got a lot of little holes in here, and that is to retain lubrication. Now, when the clutches are brand new at the factory, we pre-lubricate all those. You've seen, you've seen them do that when they were setting up on the Snedberg device. Well, after a while, that lubrication goes, so you have to re-establish the lubrication again. Now, the best way to do that, since we're not getting any lube out of here, is to take your finger or anything and apply grease on the input shaft between the clutch brake and the throw-off bearing. As this works back and forth, the bushings in turn will pick up the lubrication, and it'll stay lubed and you won't have a bushing problem. If the bushing goes out and you hear a consistent rattling, you're going to have bearing failure because everything's not pulling back straight. It's pulling at an angle, which is going to cause the bearing to get very hot and all the grease is going to cook out of it. So if you've got an older clutch in there and you're hearing a rattling sound, I'm afraid even though you're greasing the bearing, you're going to have a bearing issue. So watch it. Now, the next thing we want to watch out for is misalignment. Again, we were talking about alignment a minute ago with a worn fork as far as putting pressure here. This, your flywheel housing, has got a lot to do with alignment. Since the engine runs, or the, more or less the crank or flywheel turns counterclockwise, what happens is, all the torque is felt in this section here. Now, I'm going to show you a little deal. We have a sheet in our clutches called Stop, and it tells you how to actually dial indicate to check for flywheel housing wear. Normally, the flywheel housings like to wear between a 7 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and a 7 o'clock position, right in this area, 3 to 7. That's where it wears. Now. In our stop sheet, which I'm sure most of you don't even pay any attention to, it gives you a lot of valuable tips. Number one, it shows you how to measure the flywheels, which we just went through. And also on the back, it shows you how to set your dial indicator up to check for flywheel housing wear, and also how to make sure you don't have too much run out on the flywheel itself. Now, getting back to the flywheel, I want to touch base real quick on that. Normally, your flywheels, they have a dowel pin that lines it up with the crank. Some do not have that. Always, if you don't have a dowel pin, before you drop the flywheel to have it turn, make sure that you mark the flywheel position to the crank to put it back in the same spot. Another thing about the flywheel, is if you do need to get a new flywheel, turn it over on the back side, and they've all got a casting number stamp in them. This is a universal numbering system. Everybody goes by the casting number. Now, as far as your dial indicating, what you want to do on your housing is you set your dial indicator up on the basically on the flywheel itself and then turn the engine and you can actually see where your, where your wear is. 
It should not have over seven or eight thousandths on the flywheel housing as far as run out. Now, if you want to check the alignment as far as on your flywheel, you set your dial indicator on your housing and then spin it, and you want no more than seven thousandths run out on the flywheel. The next thing I want to talk about is where on the top of the cover. If you ever take an old cover out and you see a shiny mark looking like somebody actually put it in a lathe right around where the bearing goes, that is a sure sign that your bell housing bushings are wore out and the cross shafts are possibly wore. Because what lets it happen is when you push on the pedal, it lets that fork roll around and actually rub and make contact with the top of the cover. Always replace your bell housing bushings and your cross shafts if you see this. Now, for you guys out there running these Volvos, this is another issue. And this is very important for you also because it has something to do with your core. Volvo has no free pedal per se because of the hydraulic linkage. So you cannot feel it wearing. What you have to do is you have to actually physically go underneath, take the inspection cover up, and make sure you have a half inch A dimension. If you don't, what will happen is the truck will be going down the road and as it wears, that port gets closer and closer to the top of the cover. And it will finally just chew the whole top of the cover out. This may disqualify you from having a good core. So always on a Volvo, make sure you go back and you check your half inch A dimension periodically when you do your maintenance to prevent this. Now, we got something else a lot of times on clutch brakes. People complain, I don't get any life out of my clutch brakes. I don't understand what's going on. Well, in most cases, this is the problem. This is your front bearing retainer on the transmission. This is where the clutch brake makes contact. If that gets rough, it'll sling a brake out really good. Also, what happens is this wears that will also increase your A dimension, not your A dimension, excuse me, but your distance between your clutch brake and your bearing. Because as this goes in, it goes that away. So you've got to watch out and make sure these retainers are not worn. Now, most of the time, you can see is where they'll leave a lip right in this area. And on a brand new one, if you measure from the tip of your input shaft here to actually to where it makes contact here, it should be 8.657. If it's 8.72, this technically is wore out. Now, on a Mac, you've got to be double careful because on a Mac, it has actually has an indentation in here. So you can get a lot of wear on this front retainer, but you can't see it because it won't leave a groove right in this area. Okay. If you've ever had a one-piece clutch brake that failed, either the tanks broke off or for whatever reason, and you need to get it out of there, there's an easier way than actually firing up the torch, getting up in there, and having all that grease catch on fire and burning your arms all to pieces. The other alternative is you chisel it out which can be rather difficult because when you're up there with the chisel bit, it wants to dance around all over the place. We have something called a chisel guide. Now, what this is, first of all, it goes up through the bottom of the bell housing, ends up like this. Now, this little apparatus here, your hand is offset, so it's out of the way. This hand is free to use your air hammer with your chisel chuck in there. Now the shorter your bit, the better off you are. So how this works is, you put it in like this, this will guide your chisel bit straight up in there so it makes a good clean cut. Also what that does, it protects your front retainer on your transmission from getting dinged up and also from dinging up your throttle. So this is something that Mid-America has as far as a tool for sale. Now, one more thing I want to mention, back when we were talking about the 14-inch flywheels, as far as lining up the lugs, which is crucial, you've got to have them things lined up to get a good proper float on your center plate. This tool here is called a T-0670, and it's a drive lug aligning tool. It sits in the flywheel, lug sits in here, go ahead and apply pressure, you either hit it with a hammer, or in this hole here, you put either a 3 8 bolt or something to drive the pin in. This will check for your exact alignment. 
So you use that and you'll prevent yourself from having to pull that thing back out again because the center plate is hung up on the drive pin. Mid America offers a, what we call an MIK1, which is a master install kit, which replaces the K2468. And we're coming out very soon with what we call an MIK3, which replaces the K3600. What these kits contain is, they contain, start out with all the gaskets, the front bearing for the transmission, new input shaft, fork, bell housing bushings, the critical, the front retainer, Viton seal for the pilot bearing, the high heat, and also we will put any clutch brake in that you want, from the one piece to either hinge style or even oversized. Now, all right, for you guys out there that are going to take your self-adjusting your self -adjusting style clutch out and go back with the manual style adjusting clutch, if it has what's known as a roller fork, which I'm showing you right here, you must change the fork because the inner diameter on a roller style fork is 4.768 compared to the inner diameter on a regular standard fork, which is 4.893. In other words, you try to put a roller fork on a standard style cover and it won't fit around the bearing. So save yourself a lot of headaches and go ahead and change the fork out. Now, we get a lot of calls where the clutch has been installed for a while and all of a sudden they cannot turn the adjusting ring. In most cases, when this happens, is the clutch is full of dirt. There are a lot of you guys running around out there that are not running dust covers on your bell houses. What you got to realize is as that clutch spins, it forms a physical vacuum. It pulls every bit of debris there is back into it. It all ends up back in the cover where the adjusting ring is. And that's why the ring is tight. The easy solution to that is to run a dust cover. Now, Mid America offers a cover we call a DC-1. It's a universal cover, and it's a little different from a normal cover. If you'll notice, it's got a rubber drum inside. This is so you can push your grease hose through it, and it completely seals the bottom of the bell house. Now, I would take it a step farther. What I would do is on my bell housing himself, on the sides, if you have the extra cross shaft holes, I would fill those holes with, with an automotive style freeze plug or simply fill them full of silicone. This will keep a lot of that dirt and debris out so you shouldn't have a problem turning on the ring. They've made it a lot of drastic, as far as, not drastic, they've made a lot of improvements to the friction material where you're not getting a lot of that clutch dust in there like you used to, which is the main reason most of you do not run dust covers. So go back and run your covers and you'll, you'll have, not have a problem as far as turning your rings. Next thing we hear a lot about is slipping. When you put a new clutch in and it's slipping and you didn't alter the A dimension, Chances are there's nothing wrong with the clutch, it's just not seated in yet. Now, this is going to sound a little crude. A lot of instances, they'll go ahead and run and they will actually flatten out and seat in. But if you want to make it happen a little faster, I've got a lot of my customers that do something we call burnishing it in. That's a nice word for burning. Best way to do it is take the truck out of the shop, into the parking lot, apply the parking brake, put it in third gear, and rev it up and start slipping the clutch. What you're gonna do is it's gonna be parallel grinding and the button, the high spots will wear off of the button, do it. The important thing is let it cool down. Maybe a half an hour or so, then go out and test drive it and your problem should go away. Okay, the next thing we wanna walk talk about is a lot of times you guys, well the clutch works part of the time, and part of the time it doesn't work. In a lot of cases, you get that bell housing, everything full of dirt, and the springs don't want to contract right. The pressure plate, the levers won't move, so it won't come out of gear. And if you run down the road and it bangs around some, and some of that dirt falls out, and all of a sudden it mysteriously starts working again. So again, run a dust cover. 
Well, here another thing is, you know, I fired my clutch in the morning in the truck, and it works just great. But about midday, when it gets hot, it doesn't want to release properly. This is where you got to watch out if you're running a cable linkage. What, what happens is, the cable runs along the engine, and as it heats up, it stretches. And when it stretches, even though you're pushing down on the pedal, it's not pulling the bearing back far enough to actually release the clutch. So in that situation, you let it sit overnight, it works fine in the morning, midday, you need to replace the cable. Now, another thing we got to is we get people sending back covers and well, this thing was broken in the box. And it's broke up right around where the bearing is. What happens is, and you guys know this, is when you're stabbing a transmission, you're supposed to have the fork extended out. And then just about the time you get to the clutch, you're supposed to grab a hold of the swing arm and roll it down. If you don't roll that fork down and you drive it in to the clutch, that fork will break the cover shell on, on the clutch itself. So beware and make sure you roll the fork. I mentioned something before, and I want to bring it back. When we're talking about, actually, on the 14-inch flywheels, this little gentleman right here is known as an anti-rattle clip. It sits between the clutch lug and the flywheel. The only time these are really necessary is if you're running a Super Duty-style center plate, which means the center plate is actually 0.810 thick. A standard center plate is only 625. You do not need to run an anti-rattle clip with a standard center plate. Only the 810s. So in a lot of cases, you go back, just get rid of them. It'll actually cause sometimes for the center plate to hang up. The next thing is, we've got our new clutch in and everything. It says right on the bearing, be sure and grease the bearing. We grease the bearing at the factory. They're pre-packed but you still need to grease them because there's a void on the inside. So make sure you put and you grease the bearing before you let the clutch out of the shop.